Well, good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Good morning and welcome to From Burnout to Balance in 12 Weeks. I'm PJ Professional and RGX Mentor, Dan Boobany, and I'm a full-time golf coach at La Paloma Country Club in Tucson, Arizona. But let's be honest, this morning is not about me. It's about you guys transforming your career in 12 weeks, if not in the next 45 minutes. The fact that you're here tells me that you're willing and open to making a change. Let's start with a show of hands. How many of you guys, go ahead and hit the hand raise icon on your chat there. How many of you would be interested in doubling your hourly rate by a show of hands? How would you like to double your hourly income? Here we go. Get those hands raised. Sean, I see you working there. Very good. And again, this would be doubling your hourly rate without raising your rate. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. And I'm going to introduce you to several other PGA members, PGA professionals just like you, who are doing just that. How many of you would like to work 40 to 50% less than you are currently? For example, if you can make just as much money coaching in two to two and a half hours as you can make teaching in four, that makes you 40% more efficient with your time and 40% more productive. And what if I could show you a way to guarantee 25% off your players' handicaps? That's 25% off your players' handicaps in 12 weeks or less. Would you be interested now? Who here thinks that would be pretty cool? Well, if I can show you how to do all of these things, who here would be willing to text just one of their students with an idea? Well, if so, I can almost guarantee that you'll get a response before we leave here this morning. All right, let's get to work. I just want to start by kind of talking about who we have in the group here today. So my first question is, how many of you are full-time instructors? How many of you are part-time instructors? How many of you don't have the time or the opportunity to teach right now? Well, look, I get it, okay? Work, life gets in the way. And before we know it, we're burned out. We're exhausted. We're white. I know the feeling. But as PGA members, we all love the game. We love playing the game. And we love teaching the game. And you know what? We can all become the modern PGA coach. Every one of us. And for some of you, that might just be two hours a week. For others, that might be eight hours in a day. It's about wherever and whenever you can fit it around all of your other responsibilities and obligations. So I want you to do me a favor now and grab a notebook, a legal pad, or a piece of paper and a pen so you can take some notes. You're going to need to have your virtual presentation worksheet nearby. You're going to need that in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to take a modern coach meter quiz to see where it is that you can. And these five questions will uh, actually help you to see where you and your coaching business rank on the pathway to achieving the success of the modern PGA coach. For all of these I just want you to read and listen to the question and then write down the number that most truthfully defines your results. Then we'll tally up your scores at the end. Question number one on the modern coach meter quiz. How many rounds of golf did you play last year? How many of you played zero to three? Well, that would be a one. You played four to 10, that's a two. 11 to 15, that's a three and so on and so forth. Modern coaches play golf. Question two, how many vacation days did you take last year in season? I know what you're thinking. This guy's crazy. No way would I be able to take any time off in the middle of my high season. How many of you didn't take a single day off during your high season? Well, if it was one to three, that's a two. Four to seven, eight to 12. But that's just it, guys. Modern coaches have work-life balance. Modern coaches have work-life balance. Question number three. How many hours did you work last year in season? Now, I know it's probably not on here, but some of you probably worked 70 plus hours last year. How many of you worked 60 plus, 50 plus, 40 plus? It's okay, be honest now. Modern coaches avoid burnout. I'm in Arizona. 
our high season runs from about November 1st through April 30th. And in the months of February, March, and April of last year, I worked an average of 34.1 hours per week. And those weren't all coaching hours either. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying that to provide anecdotal evidence that it is possible. Let's get to question four. How many shots did you drop off your students' games last year? How many of you have no idea how many shots you dropped off your students' games last year? Is that something that you even measure? There might be an opportunity there. How many of you are guessing? Zero to 25? You think 26 to 50? Modern coaches get and measure results. Are you selling your time or are you selling results? And finally, question five, how much did you make teaching or coaching last year? Now, this is different for everybody. Some of you are head golf professionals or general managers, so you have a salary. You might also do some teaching, but what did you make? If it was less than 25,000, that's a one. 26 to 50, 51 to 75. There are modern PGA coaches out there making over $100,000 a year because they get paid for their expertise. Modern coaches get paid as experts. We get paid for what we know, the results we can guarantee, and how quickly we can guarantee them. Now I want you to tally up your scores. What is your modern coach meter quiz score? Where do you stand along the modern coach meter? On a scale of 5 to 25, where do you rank? The closer your score is to 25, the closer you are to becoming the modern PGA coach. I want you to go into the chat right now and just type in your modern coach total score. And uh, if you're not comfortable sharing it with the group, go ahead and just share it with me individually as a direct message. But I want to know. I want to see. I want to see how many of you. Here we go. Here come the chats. Michael, an 11. That's not bad. All right. Anybody else? Put those numbers right there in the chat. I see a seven coming through. We want to get those scores up. We want to get those scores a little closer to 25. So you're all the modern PGA coach. There's an eight. That's great. Thank you guys for sharing. Now I have one final question for you. Which area do you need to focus on in the next 30 days to make the biggest impact on yourself? Is it time to play golf? Maybe you want to play more golf. Is it time off in season? Is it greater work-life balance? Is it helping your students to improve? Or is it increasing your income? Do you need to be making more money? That's, that's where you really want to shift your focus or your attention. The next question is, where do we go from here? These are just a few examples of modern PGA coaches. They're all different ages. They're all at different stages of their careers and in different positions within the golf industry. What I'm going to show you this morning is seven steps to transform your career by transitioning to the modern PGA coach. And I say transform your career because it really can be that extraordinary. I'm going to help you build an on-course offer to get paid to play golf. That's going to double your hourly income, drive value to your club and speed up the results for your players. Step one is outline the benefits. Don't sell a product or name a price, solve a problem. If you don't believe in it, they won't believe in it. Why do you believe that coaching and not teaching is the answer and what's the difference? Why well, I always say that a teacher or an instructor gives his or her players what they want, whereas a coach gives or her, his or her players what they need in order to achieve their goals. Coaching isn't about time in exchange for money. It's about money in exchange for a guaranteed result. Scott Erdman started coaching juniors in groups utilizing the Operation 36 curriculum. And isn't it funny how everybody says, oh, yeah, coaching uh, juniors in groups is great. Nobody blinks because we learn how to play just about every other sport you can think of in a group. So why don't we coach adults in groups too? Scott wanted to get out there with adults so he could play more golf, play in more pro-ams, and hand his junior programs off to his assistants. What are some of the benefits of on-course group coaching for the student? Well, let's go through them. How about lower scores? How about more enjoyment? It's way more fun being out on the golf course than it is being stuck on the range. New connections. It's a chance for students to make new friends and play with some new people. 
you're going to get faster results. You're going to build confidence. Now, players are not as intimidated when they're paired up with other people who they may or may not know. What are some of the benefits for the club? How about community? Who's going to leave a community where they feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves, part of a collective? Increased spend. The more golf you play, the more money you're going to spend on clothing, equipment, food and beverage. See how this works. Increased retention. If golfers, again, feel like they're part of something, they're less likely to leave, which means greater retention for the club. Reduce payroll. If you can do what you used to do in four hours in two or two and a half, that costs your club less money. And then to grow your customer base, you can work with two, three, or even four times as many students, which really grows your customer base. Now your reach is that much greater. And finally, what are some of the benefits to you? More time. When you're more efficient, that means you can spend more time with family and friends or doing what it is that you really want. Increased income, doubling your revenue, play more golf. This is why we got into the golf industry in the first place, isn't it? But isn't that the dirty little secret? Oh, well, now that you're a PGA professional, you're not going to get to play golf anymore. Let's change that. How about increased passion and energy? If you're not working as many hours, you now have more energy and you feel more refreshed. You're not burned out standing on a driving range all day long. And now exercise. Now you actually have time to take care of yourself, both physically and mentally. Again, you have to believe that it's a win before your students or your club will believe that it's a win. Step two is define your ideal player. Focus on the player and what they need. First, a golf expert determines how they can and then who they want to help. And only then do they build solutions. On what does a player need to focus and what problem can you solve for that player? What do they actually need to achieve their goals? Brian King was working way too many hours just to find time to teach 30-minute lessons here and there. But now, by specializing on the ideal player for him, which is a middle school junior looking to make his or her high school golf team, he's working just nine total hours a week and making over $100,000 a year. For the seventh straight year, 95% of the players Brian coaches in the Chicago area qualified for their high school golf teams. Brian is all about results. Let's pull out your presentation worksheet now. This is that one-page worksheet from burnout to balance in 12 weeks. And at the top of that worksheet, it says define your ideal player. It's time to define your ideal player. I want you to write down the name and cell phone number of your ideal player. Who needs to get out on the golf course with you in order to improve? This isn't an idea. This is a person's actual name and number. And then I want you to list out the struggles you think that they're having. Why do you believe these, this player needs to get out on the golf course with you? Do they play too aggressively? Do they get way too technical? Are they too focused on swing instead of score? Do they struggle under pressure? Do they have blow up holes, meaning anything worse than bogey? Do they start their rounds poorly or do they just feel intimidated playing with other people? Write down the struggles you think this ideal player is having. Then I want you to list the solution or solutions that you think getting out on the golf course with you will provide for them. What goal can you help them to achieve? Is it breaking 100, breaking 90, breaking 80? Is it just reducing their fear? helping them to gain more confidence, meeting and connecting them with other players. I think we'd all be surprised to know that, you know, we have members out there who just don't really know anybody at the club. Nobody ever introduced them to other people of their similar skill level or other people who might match their personality who might want to play golf with them. If you start to understand these concepts, you're going to talk to an actual person rather than just creating another spreadsheet or sending out a mass email or, or generating another flyer for another new program. No, some of you are, are getting ready to go into, if you're not already, you guys are in your high season. The time to act was yesterday, right? You're getting ready to get into that hot uh, Florida summer sun, and you guys are going to need to kind of be thinking about the next season. So it's not too late to put this into play in the next couple of months before your season is over. 
This is communicating, guys. This is not sales. Again, you're not selling a flyer. You're starting a conversation. Step three is build your offering. Build a player-based plan, not just another program. That's me. So I remember my situation as if it was yesterday. And it was the spring of 2020. Lessons had just been suspended due to the pandemic. And within a week to 10 days, I was just, I was just miserable. And I really, I couldn't figure out why. I kept thinking, what happened? You know, I used to love driving up the hill towards the mountains here in Tucson, Arizona on my way to work. And after a little soul searching, I realized, you know, 25 to 30% of all of my days were spent out on the golf course or out on the driving range, you know, interacting with uh, and building relationships with my players. And suddenly all that had been taken away. And now I was stuck behind a counter answering phones and booking tea times. Looking back, it's funny to think that there was even a crossroads here. You know, I was I was thinking, do I become a head golf professional as a PJ member, an assistant golf professional, or do I come become a full time golf coach? And I was the only PJ professional on site. I was I was teaching ninety nine percent of all the lessons at our facility, and yet I was severely restricted in terms of the number of hours I could teach every week to just ten. I was needed in the golf shop, but I was booked three weeks in advance, and I had a waiting list. 30 people long. I knew that there was a demand for what I love, which was to help other people play better golf. I felt overworked, underappreciated, and underpaid. So at the same time I was feeling trapped in the shop, I stumbled upon becoming the Modern Coach video series on PGA Coach. And there was this quirky British guy named Will Robbins who was articulating things and putting into words things I couldn't express myself about the way I was feeling. And I, I still remember the day I was sitting in, in the office of my general manager, the director of golf was seated to my left. And I said the words, guys, I want to get out of the golf shop. And it was like the DJ at the back of the room that the record kind of went. Err. And they leaned in and they said, what did you say? And I told them, I don't just want to do this. I have to do this. And if I can't do it here, I'm going to do it somewhere else. I described the feeling it was as if I was on fire. Just, just get out of my way. And it was Will and his team who prepared me and gave me the confidence to say those words out loud to the people who really needed to hear them, my general manager and my director of golf, because I'd grumbled privately to friends and family. But now having said those words, it was like an anvil had been lifted off my shoulders. Becoming the modern PG coach has absolutely changed my life. And it'll change yours too, if you're willing to listen to and hear the message. I knew my players wanted to get out on the golf course with me. I knew they wanted to spend more time with me. They would always tell me, I can do it here, pointing to the driving range, but I can't do it out there. And they would point to the golf course. And it used to break my heart. I kept thinking, you know, what was I missing? And in my case, it was just the time to be able to get my players out on the course for longer than just 30 minutes to an hour at a time. So let's build your offering. It starts with the duration. Okay. Now that you know who will benefit, right? You defined your ideal player. You know who will benefit from getting out on the course with you and why. You know who you're looking for. And you've identified a player by name. What's the on course coaching session that will best fit your players, your facility, and you? What duration works best for you on course? There's no right or wrong here, but we suggest starting with a two hour coaching session because it gives you time to play without committing to a full nine holes so you can kind of move around the course. And then you have a little bit of time to review afterwards. So even if you can only play, you know, four or five, maybe six holes, that's okay. It's better to get them out on the golf course and off the driving range anyway. And then you have to define what is your, your ideal coach to player ratio. If it's four to one, well, that allows you to very neatly double your hourly rate because it divides the cost of the hourly rate over four players instead of just three or two. And it allows you to kind of observe so that you can, Keep the pace of play moving. Be sure not to slow down regular play. I, if I were to say anything, that's probably the only pushback I get from my facility is this perception when groups of players see us when they're playing behind us and they see five people in front of them, they think, oh my gosh, there are five, so they're going to be playing slow. When in reality, it's a coaching session. There are four people playing golf. I'm observing. And in reality, we play just as fast, if not faster than, than they do. So that's a really important thing, pace of play. Then you have to decide, well, what day works best for you. Okay, pick pick a day of the week and what time works best for you. And that's really important. You you want to start actually picking a day and a time that works best for you. 
my wife and I, we sit down probably once a quarter and we talk about what the next several months are going to look like for our family. We decided it was best for our family if I coached Monday through Thursday and then on Sunday afternoons just briefly. And then what is your current one hour private lesson rate? Whatever that is, just write it down. What's your rack rate? And now your on-course coaching rate, I want you to double your private lesson rate. Double it. Just double it. So your on-course coaching rate is now twice as much as what you're currently charging for an individual one-on-one private lesson. Now I want you to go back to your worksheet. It's time to personally reach out and share your idea. Now that you have a product and a solution, it's time to share your idea with your ideal player. Let them know that you're invested in their success. And now it's not about you. It, it's about them. It's, about, it's not about selling something. It's about caring for someone. It's time to take action. Ready, fire, aim. What's the number one reason why people fail? Well, they never start. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to grab your phone. I want you to send this text message to your ideal player. And I want you to send it verbatim. So you can personally invite them. You'll see it there on your presentation worksheet. The first person to get a response back from this text gets a free 30-minute Zoom mentoring call with me. Okay? Keep that in mind. Send out this text. Whoever gets a response back first gets a free 30-minute Zoom mentoring call with me. And it goes something like this. Hey, Scott, it's Coach Dan. I have an idea I want to run by you. I want to get my players out on the golf course to play with me and other golfers who are committed to improving their games. You're at the top of my list. Let me know when you have some time to chat. As you can see, this is a very carefully worded text message. I have an idea I want to run by you. It's an idea. You're not selling them a product. It's just an idea. You want to talk to them. You want to have a conversation with them. I want to get my players out on the golf course. Right? So you want to see them play golf with me and other golfers. You didn't say it was in a group, but you just said it was other golfers who are committed, on course, committed to improving their games. That's about results. You didn't say, do you want to do a group on course coaching session? No, you're saying you're at the top of my list. I was thinking about you. You're a priority. Let me know when you have some time to chat. Don't let them off the hook. If you don't hear back from them, talk to them in person the next time you see them. Seek them out. When they see their name, they're going to be happy. When they see that their coach is contacting them, that's going to get their attention. They trust your expertise, so invite them. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the chat right now, and I'm going to send, I'm going to put in the chat my personal cell phone number. Whoever gets a response back from that text message first, text it to me, screenshot it to me. And I'll send you a Calendly link to book a free 30-minute Zoom mentoring call with me. This is really, really important. Think about it, guys. You're, you're stuck where you are for a reason. Paralysis by analysis. You're the player who says, I'll get out on the golf course with you once I get my grip, my posture, my alignment all set. Just do it. You have nothing to lose. Get your players out on the golf course with you and, and see what happens. This is just a text message. You're not selling anything. You're not listing price. You're not even saying a time. You just want to get them out on the golf course with you. What do golfers want? You know, you didn't ask, do you want to do a group on course coaching session? But maybe you should have. What do golfers really want? Well, do you even know? We thought it would be a good idea to ask them. In a recent survey of almost 1,400 golfers conducted in conjunction with the Southern California PGA section, we first asked, have you ever had an on-course lesson with your PGA Pro? What percentage do you think said yes? What percentage do you think said no? Well, only 38% said yes. They'd actually been out on the golf course with their PGA Pro. 62% said no. But then we went one step further. We said, if offered an on-course playing lesson in a foursome with a PGA member, would you likely participate? Again, what percentage do you think said yes? A whopping 89% said yes. Your players, your students, your customers are telling you that they want to get out on the golf course with you. 
give them what they want while giving them what they need. A lot of players don't even know this is available to them. So now you're ready to talk with them, to ask great questions, to invite them to join you if they fit. Share your vision and beliefs to get their buy-in. Has anyone gotten a text back yet? My phone's not blowing up. Make sure you send that thing out. And if you do get a response, feel free to unmute yourself, share it with the group. We would love to hear uh, what kind of response you get because I guarantee you, if you send this out, you're gonna get a response. Bo Baker credits greater work-life balance for giving him the opportunity and the time to meet his then fiance, now wife. They actually just got married earlier this summer, but at the time, Bo was working way too many hours. He had next to no free time. And then he started asking his players some great questions, which led to having great conversations. Now is the time to meet with your players in person, or at the very least, call them on the phone. In person is preferable, and here's why. You can read each other's body language. I remember when I was reaching out to players who I wanted to coach, and, and one player in particular, he was a football coach, and he flat out told me, I want to be coached. And at the time, I didn't really know what to do. I, had, I didn't really have a solution for him. But when I finally did meet with him, we were sitting across from each other. We were in person, and I was practically on the edge of my seat. I was so excited. And he looked at me across the table, and he said, I'm all in. And I was kind of I was kind of confused because I, I hadn't even mentioned price or time. And he goes, I can just tell how passionate you are. And I want to follow you. I want to be part of that. Here are some questions to ask your players when you do meet with them. How did you play in your last three rounds? How have you been playing? What's going on? What do you need to improve when you play? What shot do you struggle with? On the course, I know you're struggling with the first tee. I've been thinking about you. What are you struggling with? How is your course management? What is your mindset when you play? Are you calm and relaxed or are you running late to the golf course and then you show up to the first tee all tense because you haven't had a chance to warm up? What hole do you struggle with the, the most, right? Every golf course has a hole that just bothers our players like no other hole does. Whether you're meeting with them in person or over the phone, remember, you're not selling a product. Your, your goal is to ask questions about their play and how they're doing on the course. You're just asking questions. Most lessons focused on swing and not score, right? Let's shift the conversation to playing better golf with the swing that they have out on the golf course. Go watch them play in the environment in which they play the game, which is total chaos. What if we got on the golf course? Could you see how it'd be helpful if we got you on the golf course and I could watch you tee off and see how you navigate the first hole that you struggle with so much? Can you see how if I actually got you in a pressure situation with a few other people who I know have the same issue that you do, I can actually coach you under some pressure so you could overcome that? You can't do that on the driving range. Ask great questions. Shift everything to questions. Coaches observe and ask great questions. We have two ears and one mouth, and sometimes I wonder if we shouldn't listen twice as much as we talk. Step six is repeat the process and keep having conversations until your twosome, threesome, or foursome is full. Get one session filled to see the impact. I didn't say twosomes, threesomes, or foursomes. I'm talking about just one session. Just get one group of people out on the golf course with you to see the impact. So you've got the name of your ideal player. Write down the names of two or three more players in addition to your ideal player who you think would benefit from on-course coaching. If it's four people, a four-to-one coach-to-player ratio, fill just one foursome and then do it again. Rinse and repeat. Keep having conversations with people. One of the questions I always get is, well, what type of groups? The right type of people. Put friends with friends. One of the things I always ask is, you know, when, when I'm having a conversation with somebody, I say, can you think of anyone else who might like to join you on your coaching journey? And they go, oh yeah, I've got three friends I, I would like to invite with me. And there you go, there's your foursome. So you had one conversation and they filled the foursome for you. You can pair players together, group players up by similar skill level, but you don't have to, right? I mean, how often do you or your players, you know, show up to the T and you get paired with two people who aren't as good as you, or they get paired with two people who aren't as good as them, or maybe they 
get paired with two people who are better than them, right? We all need to learn how to navigate with players who are at different skill levels. Has anyone got a text back yet? Any text responses back yet? I don't see anything in my chat window. Send out that text, guys. Go back to your presentation worksheet. Send it out. You'll get a response, I promise. Step seven is getting prepped for the first tee. Now that your group is full, let's get you prepped for the first tee. This is step seven. Get off to the right start to get the best results. Scott Vice is proof that old dogs can learn new tricks. He's been a PGA member since 1991. And as a result of becoming the modern PGA coach, Scott now has the job of his dreams in his home state of Louisiana. He only taught two on-course playing lessons in more than 30 years. But two summers ago, he dropped an average of 17 shots off of his players' games in just 10 weeks. 17 shots in 10 weeks. You don't have to be good at this. You're going to kill it, right? What is the presentation, uh, the survey we showed you? 89% of your players want to get out on the golf course with you. They're dying to get out on the golf course with you. And I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. You're going to get out on the golf course with your group. You're going to watch them play golf. And you're going to say, hey, what'd you think? And they're going to go, oh my gosh, when can we do this again? And that's when you're going to go, oh crap, like this really worked. And of course it's going to work because who would want to be out there with their expert, with their PGA pro, with a, a PGA member? Players want this. They either don't know how to ask for it, or they don't know that it's an option available to them. You're ready to play, but you have to get the first tee right. And that means aligning expectations. Step one, make introductions by name to make connections. It's real simple. You're there to connect people. Hi, Bob. This is Joe. Joe, this is Bob. Maybe they know each other. That's great. But go ahead and still introduce everybody. Make sure that everybody knows who everybody else is in the group. Then you're going to share your excitement and your gratitude. You're there to get them excited and to show how grateful you are and how grateful they should be to be able to be out there, right? We're, we get to be outdoors on some of the most beautifully manicured landscapes in the world. Give them a little perspective. How bad can things really be if we get to be out here doing this today? Then I want you to define coaching expectations for the session. The expectation is not to fix them. It's to go out on the golf course, to watch them play golf so you can build a plan to help them get better, to see them play under pressure, see how they navigate certain situations, what are their struggles, and to play at a good pace. Basically, everything you've never been able to do on a driving range. Define the expectations. You want them to play their game of golf. How diffusing is it to say, I actually want to see you play poorly today. And why do I say that? Because if they play well, well, what are you going to do? You're going to look at them and they're going to look at you and you're going to go, well, keep doing what you're doing, right? No, you want to see them struggle. You want to see what they do when you're not there. And that means acknowledging the anxiety. This may be the most important step. You're also there to share that you're nervous. When I ask people when I'm on the first tee, hey, who's nervous today? Everybody's hand goes up, including mine. Why? Well, because as the master of ceremonies, I want them to have a good experience and I want to make sure that we're playing at a good pace because that's the only complaint I ever get. So I tell my players, look, we'll play as many holes as we can today, but it's really up to you. And if we fall behind the group in front of us and we have to pick up, we have to pick up because our responsibility is to keep up with the group in front of us. So I handle pace of play. You also want to build a learning environment, build an environment where they can just play golf, ask them a ton of questions, but really you're not, you're not there to do a lot of coaching. You're there to do a lot of observing. The goal is to start to understand where they are in their own game because you want to devise a plan for them and then manage the pace of play. I want my players to focus on hitting the best possible shot that they can every time. And I take the trouble of looking over my shoulder to make sure that there's nobody coming up behind us. You want to get them out there to experience what on-course coaching really is. I'll just tell you from experience, the first hole, sometimes the first three holes can be really slow because what are they? They're really overwhelmed, right? I mean, they're playing in front of their pro, their friends, their expert, right? There's a lot of thinking going on. Then the next three holes, holes four, five, and six, they're going to get a little bit more comfortable. And then the last three holes, they might start playing better, but they may also have a blow up hole. 
You just want to understand how they play the game of golf. You're asking them questions like, well, how far do you hit it? Where are you aiming? What's your target? What do you normally do here? What are your weaknesses? Get them to, to start talking. More than likely, again, if you're going to get any pushback from your facility, it's right here. It's pace of play. It's perception versus reality. And another one of the things I like to do is, is to just talk to the starter before we're going out and just say, hey, we're going out for an on-course coaching session. If you could just remind the group immediately behind us that we're going out for a coaching session, that way they don't start calling the shot because they see five people in front of them and five of them not allowed at our golf course. So I just you know, warn the starter. And that usually solves a lot of the issues. That way the golf shop's not getting inundated with calls like, Hey, what's uh, Dan doing out here with five, five people. Oh, he's in a, he's in a coaching session, you know? So keep that in mind. What are the next steps? Let's go back to your worksheet and take a look at the next steps there. Beginning with starting your journey at PGA coach, watch the modern PGA coach certification series, record your progress as you go by, by checking the box and writing down the date you completed each step. Running a successful on-course coaching session, building a player development plan, goal sheets, it's all there. And it used to be that you had to complete your American development model or ADM training in order to unlock your modern PGA coach training, but that's no longer the case. And it's online at PGA coach. And here's the best part. It's at no additional cost to you. Get signed up today. I don't know if you noticed this, but in the last week or so, Will Robbins, the same quirky British guy I was referring to earlier, actually re released a new video series called The Five-Hour Coach. So again, it doesn't matter how much time you have, whether it's two hours, five hours, maybe you have eight hours in a day to do this. Make yourself more efficient, make yourself more money, make your players happier by getting them results. And this all comes from getting them out on the golf course. Then download the PGA Coach app. The app allows players to book playing lessons with you online. You can schedule your time. So for example, if you only have two hours a week and it's on a Tuesday, you can put that in there and send texts, emails, or Facebook messages to all of your students and have them sign up through there. This is what the PGA of America is doing for you. And the app is constantly evolving. It's so good. PGA Coach. If you don't have it, get it. And then in the coming days, you'll be receiving an email invitation to join our follow-up Zoom Q&A call. We're going to do a 30 to 45-minute follow-up Q&A because I understand I've given you a lot of information in a very short period of time this morning. I want to know, you know, like, who did you speak to? Did you get on a call or meet with a, your ideal player in person? How did it go? No question is off limits. That date I want you to put in your phone is going to be Tuesday, April the 4th at 11 o'clock Eastern. Tuesday, April 4th, 11 Eastern. Save that time and date by adding it to your calendar right now because you don't want to miss it. And then I want you to reach out and contact your player engagement consultant, Jackie Hobson. Jackie Hobson is your player engagement consultant. jhobson at pgahq.com is the email address. I'm going to put that in the, in the chat box as well because this is really important. This is the person who's in charge of helping you with all of your player issues out on the golf course. How do you get more players out on the golf course with you in coaching sessions? So Jackie Hobson is your contact, jhobson at pghq.com. I just put that in the chat box along with my personal cell phone number. If anybody, again, send out the text, get a response back. I will give you a Calendly link for a free 30-minute Zoom consultation call with me, no charge. And then lastly, reach out to RGX, revolutionizing golf instruction to learn more about results-based group coaching. We've partnered with the PGA of America to coach coaches how to transition their students and their businesses to results-based group coaching using step-by-step -step plans, weekly live virtual training sessions, personalized accountability and coaching, and of course, guaranteed results for your business. Schedule a call to see how we can help you. Scan the QR code on your screen or at the bottom of your worksheet there. All right, last chance. Did anybody get a text message response back from a player, their ideal player who they sent that text message out to? Go ahead, unmute yourself. I want, it, I want you to read it out loud to us. And remember, anybody who gets a response back, texts me a screenshot, <clears throat> they're going to get a free 30-minute Zoom consultation call with me. Last but not least, as you look at the modern PGA coaches here, 
Does anyone have any questions or anything before we wrap up our session this morning? Feel free to unmute yourself. You can ask me anything you'd like. Nothing is off limits. And I really enjoyed our time this morning. This is only just the beginning. This is the future of the golf industry. On course group coaching. It's more efficient. It's more effective. It simulates the environment in which you play. Your players get more time with you. You get more time with them. And it actually costs them less money, even though you're doubling your hourly rate. Because remember, by coaching in groups, now you're able to divide that cost out over four players or three players as opposed to just one. So you become a lot more effective with your time. Ladies and gentlemen, if nobody has any questions for me, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about your coaching journey when I see you again at our follow-up Zoom Q&A called Tuesday, April 4th at 11 o'clock. This is not the end. This is only just the beginning. Thanks again, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And thank you for joining us this morning.